Okay, welcome back to another Quarter Notes. I love doing these because it gives me an opportunity to talk about albums that I normally would have probably left on the wayside and like not really talked about because I don't have enough to talk about a full length album review. Like I don't have enough to really go in depth on it, but there's still like either artists or features that I want to talk about or, you know, artists from the prog sphere that I want to get people to know about. Uh, so yeah, there's just enough to talk about for me to have something to say, but not enough to really warrant a full length album review. So this should have gone out like two or three weeks ago because most of these albums came out September 23rd or 28th or somewhere around there. Uh, so yeah, this one's coming at you a little bit late, but, uh, Need to take a little bit of time for myself. So let's dive into these four albums, starting with... Lunar Mist by Virgil and Steve Howe. So Virgil and Steve Howe, I think we all know who Steve Howe is, you know, legendary guitarist for Yes. Um, but it also features Virgil Howe, uh, Steve Howe's son on the keyboards. And, you know, the two of them have put out one album prior to this, and it followed suit very closely to Steve Howe's last solo record, which I believe was like Love or Hope or something along those lines. I really ended up digging that. It was very soft, mellow, atmospheric guitar works. And that can kind of feel the continuation of this with the addition of a lot of piano work and keyboard work. And, you know, Virgil does follow suit with Steve Howe's um, kind of starting place with playing with a lot more of that atmospheric, very impressionistic, very uh, kind of up in the sky. And like Lunar Mist is a very good nomiker for this album, it's very ethereal. It's very whimsical. You know, there's not a whole lot of thrashing going on. There's not a whole lot of like really big standout moments on here, uh, but it does provide a very pleasant listen from start to finish. I wouldn't necessarily run out to go and get this, but if you love like kind of like a Sunday afternoon album where you know you're not going to get any kind of really big bombastic or over the top playing styles, you're not going to get anything big and loud or crazy. Uh, you're not going to get anything hugely challenging, then this one's probably for you. But if you're looking for an album with a little bit more teeth, a little bit more to really sink your, your gums into, uh, you might want to try somewhere else. Yeah, this is one that I would ultimately stream. I think that it's a good work from Virgil and Steve. And you can tell that they both really love the craft that they're doing. You know, you can see that the this is a father and son dynamic that really is a, a great creative outpour for them and I really appreciate it. You know, I really, really dug it. Um, it's not one that I've personally come back to since it's dropped, but it's still one that I would recommend checking out if you're a fan of either of these artists. So, yeah. Orlando, La Forme del Amor by Banco de Mutos Corso. And I really hope I got those right. Oh, boy. Uh, so I, I just usually shrunk it down to the, the Banco. Uh, Banco is a very prominent uh, Italian progressive rock band uh, hailing from the 70s, making a lot of leeway within, you know, really trailblazing the the Italian prog, uh, them with PFM, they really carved out what it was to be Italian prog. A lot more operatic, a lot more dynamic. You know, it was, it was almost um, taking the symphonic stylings of progressive rock from the UK and America, but really like pushing it to the extremes. Uh, it almost felt like you were listening to a full on opera. And this one is another concept album from them. Man, I just, I've been loving this one. You know, like I, I, I recognize that I am a, a, a very unexperienced individual when it comes to the Italian prog. You know, I've only really gotten my feet wet within the Italian prog sphere. So anytime a new Italian prog uh, project or item comes out, I'm always interested. I always want to kind of check them out. And yeah, you get a lot more of the same. Now, this one is a lengthy beast. This one is a lengthy beast at an hour, uh, just under an hour and 20 minutes. But the amount of land that is covered on here. The sophistication and the songwriting ship on here is top notch. Everything's in Italian, so I don't quite know what they're actually singing about, but uh, you can tell the emotion aspect on here. Uh, it never really reaches into the melodrama, but the emotion that is found within the vocal works and the, the singing styles is just 
like heartbreaking. It really, really is. Um, I'm loving the playing styles. I'm loving the, the emphasis on the keyboards on here. Some of the keyboard planes on here is just mind bending. If you're a fan of more of the experimental symphonic works, like if you're thinking of what would happen if Tony Banks had joined Yes after Tales of Topographic Oceans, you're getting kind of what you're feeling within this album. Loving the, the lush keyboard works, the, syn the, the synchronicity and the sophistication that is found on here is just jaw dropping. Like as I was listening to this, I'm like, this is so slick. This is so smooth. When so many bands nowadays, especially in the prog sphere, are so fixated and so like obsessed with creating overly complex polyrhythms and overly complex rhythm styles, Hearing somebody and some band creating complex and sophisticated music in a much more simple and a much more digestible rhythm styles really blew me away. It really absolutely did. I, I've been really loving this album. I've been coming back to it time and time again. And it's it's a genre that, as I mentioned, I need a lot more time with to really and fully appreciate. Uh, if you haven't gotten into the Italian progs yet, go and check out Orlando from Banco. Uh, such a brilliant one. This is one that I would absolutely pick up in physical format. Uh, I think that if this is the last album we get from Banco, I think that they went out with a an absolute feather in their cap. You know, they went out on top. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they still have some gas in their tank. So, yeah, that's what I've got for Orlando by Banco da Muto Socorro. Um, and I really hope that I pronounced all those words properly. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. <music> Kings of Mercia, self-titled debut album. Uh, this is something I want to try to do a little bit more on these quarter notes, is incorporating a band that has reached out to me directly to have a listen to their albums. Because most of the time I'll listen to them and I'm like, yeah, these are good, but I don't really have too much to say. So I want to try to at least incorporate one of these into each of my quarter notes, uh, just to kind of uh, show the spotlight on these guys. Uh, and these guys are fine. And not necessarily straight uh, prog in any way, shape, or form. This is much more of like a hard rock. And this was something that I mentioned on my uh, podcast, uh, The Metalhead, um, link down below, um, where a lot of bands nowadays, uh, specifically in the rock style of things, because I, I don't know, I'm kind of one of the individuals that thought that rock pretty much died by like 2006, 2007. You know, like we don't really have any straight up modern rock and any rock band that is making any kind of splash or hits are relying too much on the rock from the past rather than inventing or discovering or developing new styles for today. But Kings of Mercia, you know, it's, it's kind of like that straight up old school style hard rock music. You know, this is something that we would have heard from like Rush or something that we would have heard from so, like pain of salvation or something along those lines. Uh, it's heavy hitting, it's hard, it's it's grooving, it's very energetic, but it's also not necessarily my cup of tea. Like when I'm listening to music, I want just a little bit more sophistication. If it's straight up rock and I want to be hard, I want something a little bit new. You know, like I'm looking for something that Black Midi would do or something that Black Country New Road would be doing. You know, something a little bit more unique, something a little bit more avant-garde, something that we haven't heard before. Um, and in some cases, a lot of people I can see loving this because uh, specifically on New Kings of Mercia, where there really isn't anything too, too new on this. Uh, immediately, you know what you're going to get. You know, it's immediately familiar. It's immediately satisfying in that sense. I don't know. I, I just look for a little bit more on it. Now, that being said, there's still a lot to really dive into, you know, as I mentioned. When it hits hard, it hits quite hard. There's a few moments on here that I was like, ooh, 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 that's nice. Ooh, ooh, that's tasty. But the amount that was found on here doesn't really justify for me to return to the 45-minute um, runtime on it. And, you know, I think... Again, I know what I like, and this doesn't quite fit into that box. Uh, but it might be for you. Like, if you like just straight-up hard rock music, I have a feeling you'll probably dig it. You know, if you're looking for that that classic sound, you're going to find it here. But yeah, for me, it's one that I would probably skip if I'm... Uh, telling myself this. But I would also probably say it's a stream if you're a fan of this style of music. So... There you go. That's what I've got for Kings of Mercia. I still say go and check it out. You know, you're not losing anything outside of maybe your time <laughs> if you're not a fan of this. But uh, yeah, just go and check it out. 
All right, last up onto the docket is one that I saw making its headway a lot during the summer, and that is the new album from Dave Kresner, The Traveler. Uh, one of the things that really kind of stood out for me was I thought that this was a straight a EP because that's all I could find on all the streaming services. And I thought, okay, it's an EP. It's like three or four songs and that's all I've got. Nope. Uh, it's a full album and you just have to go through the paywall for it. So yeah, yeah. It's interesting because I, I went through the paywall, you know, I gave Dave some money so that I could listen to this album and I... I <sighs> There's a bigger conversation to probably had with all that because had I listened to this on streaming services, I probably wouldn't have paid for it. <laughs> like there are definitely albums that I've listened to and countless albums just this year that I've listened to that I've subsequently purchased. Um, but yeah, putting your album behind a paywall and then realizing like, I'm only going to listen to this like maybe once or twice. Now I have a feeling I'm in the minority for this one. I know a lot of people have been loving this album. This album is going back to like the, uh, what I like to say is like the, the second wave of progressive rock within the seventies, you know, bands like Kansas, like sticks, like Boston, where they were taking this style of progressive rock and infusing it a lot with the very popular rock of the time. Uh, it's very American prog in that sense with those kinds of bands because you don't really get those big sprawling epics you don't get that really amount of that sophistication within progressive rock that this album is kind of being billed for like i'm seeing a lot of love for this album within a lot of the big prog spheres when the most generous that i could say about this album is that it's prog related like it's 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 feeling a lot like what a lot of proggers uh, and prog artists are doing lately of shifting their focus more into the accessibility side of things. Like this feels like yes when they went to Tornado. You know, this feels like Genesis when they went to Abacab. Now that being said, there are still moments on this album that I do genuinely enjoy. Those moments are kind of few and far between. You know, I don't really feel myself coming back to this album all that often. It has a little bit more of sophistication to it, but this is reminding me of some of the other albums that we've heard this year alone, like 6x6, like A to Z, where it's, you know, you can see that there's a lot of talent behind it, but they just would rather play very accessible, very rockish, very fun music. You know, it's reminding me of like Asia or UK, where it was a, a super group of a lot of very talented, very experienced progressive rock musicians that wanted to play just arena rock, radio friendly rock aspects. And that's kind of what I'm feeling for this one from Dave. You know, I'm not all that excited about it. Yeah, I don't know. I was just left a little cold on this one, especially with the amount of love that this album is feeling. Like I just, I don't, I don't feel it, but I am very, very glad that other people are connecting with it and that they're enjoying it. You know, I'm really happy to see that. Yeah, this is one that I would ultimately skip if I were recommending it to myself, um, for everybody else, I mean, give it a stream, see if it's up your alley, or at least, I don't know, I wouldn't have paid for this album if I didn't feel like I had to, um, but yeah, there you go, there you go. So those are my those are my four albums this time around. Uh, what did you guys think about this? these albums? Did you love them? Did you hate them? Which was your favorite? Which was your least favorite? Let me know all about that by commenting down below. And that's all I've got for you guys today. Uh, so uh, I just want to remind everybody of my new podcast, Quid Prog, <laughs> Quid Prog Quo. That's my last podcast. I mean, you can still find that wherever there's uh, podcast catchers out there. Uh, I have five episodes in the bank for that one. I just need to edit them and put them out. But uh, no, my new podcast of The Metalhead, uh, that's with my friend Grace. Uh, she has uh, some great music out there under Grace Hayhurst. Uh, go and look that up. Um, but uh, yeah, look at the metalhead. I've got the link down below. It's a meditative podcast all about metal music. So yeah, hope you guys like that. And that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.